So, and the next thing I'm going to do is add some tabs here where we can attach uh, the notepad holder and envelopes, etc. Now, I have a template uh, in here, a template without any design. I also have uh, with two designs, but we're going to have to add a bit of inking here and there just to make sure there won't be any sharp white from the pages. It says here, print on color, full color paper or ink the centers on the back. Um, yeah, you can full color paper on the back, but I think it's a little bit not necessary. You can also use just regular because you won't see a lot, <laughs> I assure you. You can just use sturdy, regular uh, paper. This is 160 grams as well. And first thing I'm gonna do is cut these two out. So I cut them out. Let me put this aside for a bit. And what I'm gonna do now is optional and that is cut these four corners on each of the papers. So I have my corner rounder here. It's really total op totally optional most of them you won't even see but I think it works easier okay um I just realized you're not going to see these corners and it's absolutely not necessary to round them uh, I'm gonna leave it and now I'm just going to score the center line and fold these in half it's actually very simple they are two inches wide um, eight, eight inches long and just score them in half. So if you don't want to use these, just take some sturdy colored paper. You're going to see fragments from this and that is why this is so weird. It's, that's the piece you're probably going to see. And there are pieces on the back, obviously, that you're not going to see at all, but I'll explain it. Then I'm going to fold this in half. Don't be alarmed by the corners. Just ignore the corners, <laughs> please. Okay, and now how am I going to attach this piece to that piece is with sewing. And I love this bit. I really do. I don't know why. I just find it so suiting. So how am I going to do that with a double running stitch? The first thing I'm going to do is take my mat here. I uh, don't, yeah, these fit on here perfectly. And my all, yeah, you don't need to push all the way through with this. Uh, just the tip is enough. And I'm gonna make, um, wrong side. I am going to make a hole every quarter of an inch. You can make the distance between the hole smaller. Let's say instead of a quarter of an inch, you use um, three sixteenth of an inch if you like finer stitches. I'm just gonna go with a quarter of an inch because it's easier. This. You can make them larger as well as long as you have some stitches to hold these together. I'm gonna turn it around just to check <laughs> if I didn't miss a spot. Okay, for the next one, I'm just gonna put these on top of each other. Could have done that from the beginning actually. And just punch through the first holes so they line up really well. Take some thread that is more than uh, twice the length. Just be a bit generous. It's just a bit easier to make knots at the end, etc. I have my fine embroidery needle right here. Now, before I start to, I should have done this before, perhaps, doesn't really matter. Before I'm actually going to start to uh, sew, I'm going to ink the empty spots here. I can use quite a bit of ink because um, like 16 to until an eighth of an inch, you will actually see. 
So it's best to color this. Just give it some color so it won't show, it won't be white, you know. Uh, you have this lovely vintagey colored look and this is so stark white it is not pretty so there yeah that's good enough for me the other one as well the most logical for me would be to place this one underneath with the uh, completely colored one on that side I will tell you later when I can show you why I would think that'd be the best way and then put this one in the center there and to sew so, I'm gonna start from the back so the knot will be on the back okay doesn't really matter you know so and then keep a little tail here so my tail is about three inches max a bit less it's just to to tie a knot and then just weave your way through so you go back out in the next hole back in the next hole very simple oops I'm losing my tail here very simple so out in and i think this is so therapeutic it is so easy you don't have to think at all By the way, you can use this technique to sew uh, journals as well, if you like. If you have the patience and you like to sew. So now you see it bad, better on the back, I guess. You have like a stitch empty, a stitch empty, a stitch empty. But we will fill it up, the empty places, when we go back uh, the other way. So I'm gonna go in the last hole and then just go back. So I'm gonna go back in and now you're just doing the same but this way you're just filling in the gaps. Oh, this is a double running stitch if I'm not mistaken. And when you're at the back, just make a double knot and cut off the ends. Obviously, I had way too much thread. So, here we go. And now we have four tabs. Let me take the journal this is still the front we're going to attach this one here like this just to be sure I think I'm gonna add a bit more color here now to place this correctly I already cut the inside cover for uh, this piece and just like I did with uh, placing the flaps here these holders I'm gonna use this to find the right placing for this, um, these tabs. So I'm gonna position this, then slide this under, I'm gonna hold this, slide this under, center it, and I'm gonna make sure this can close completely. So I'm gonna 
make sure this can uh, move. Gonna get this out and make a mark where I want it. There. So then I am going to add some double sided tape on this side and I'm gonna leave like a 16 to an inch a millimeter gap here. Yeah, and I can definitely add two of these here. There. Okay, and now I see my line is a little bit off. So I'm going to make sure it's straight, but at least I know where I want it to be. So in the center, yeah, you want this really straight. Okay. It's too late. We're going to check again just to be sure. Yeah, that's a really nice placement here. And now I'm going to add double-sided tape on top of all these three tabs. So not on this one, it's not necessary, but here and here and here. So I'm already going to do that, but I'm going to leave about two millimeter, about a small eighth of an inch from the edge. And that's why I wanted it colored. So. So it's best to, to look what I'm doing first um, because you have a, quite a bit of possibilities here and maybe you want to attach other things in another way to these tabs and then obviously you might have to change where you put your glue but I am going to put tape on all three tabs and indeed the fourth tab is just being used to hold these in place score tape in place let me make sure these stick okay and they are ready to go and what i'm going to do now is simply attach the inside covers so this was the back cover, this is one of the front covers, and this is another one of the front covers. Obviously you can choose which one you want and mix and match them. I just took the same design for all three. And what I'm going to do is uh, ink the edges again. That's purely optional, you don't need to do that. But I like to, especially for the inside edges, uh, the inside covers. So I've inked them quite roughly and um, it's very easy. I'm going to put double-sided tape on the edges, uh, glue stick in the center, and I'm just going to put them like this right here. Always before gluing them down, make sure the tabs can really easily move. Close them before putting them down. Um, the inside cover for the back is going to come in here do the same so make sure you can actually close and then the last one comes here very easy now if your ribbon if you have large holes like this and your ribbon is or cord you can use cord as well it's quite small you're going to see some white through this so what i advise you to do is mark the spot about where the hole will be. Make it large enough and just ink it. So I'm gonna ink the whole thing. Same thing with this one here. 
So the hole will be about, well, maybe I can just mark it here. Yeah, that's easier. <laughs> Do it like that. And I'm just gonna ink that whole thing. I'm gonna get rid of this little dot in the center though. Just make sure it's not white anymore. That's all, it will have a shadow. Just make sure it's not white anymore. There, while this ink dries, I'm gonna start with the center one and show you. There. it sticks well glue stick in the center obviously you can glue, use glue all over you can also use double-sided tape all over you have like these really wide rolls nowadays this and when there's glue any everywhere place it in the center and when you're sure glue it down there pretty and I do exactly the same with these ones. Make sure if you colored the back side that you put them on the right side. So this one goes here and this one goes here exactly. So. I attach the inside covers and I now only notice a small mistake I made. You see the pattern on this grungy background. It has a scales with the round side down and down and here it's up I know it's barely visible but it is very visible if you know so um, don't make my mistake unless you intentionally mean to um, have the pattern that way okay now I mean to have a pen holder right here and I'm going to make that pen holder out of the leftover of this piece of fabric paper I'm going to use this pen and it's best to know beforehand which pen you're going to use now obviously when you make it large enough a smaller pen will fit as well but I'm going to use this one as, uh, for my measurements and the first thing to do is to cut a strip that is um, let's say three quarter of an inch high and three inches long just to be sure it's a bit longer than you need but then you are sure you don't have too little and for the rest you're not going to use this piece anymore I choose three quarter of an inch high, but you can make it half an inch high as well. So the height that you want your pen holder to be. And again, I am going to measure this on the back. Okay, I'm gonna start with this mark. There's a mark already here. Um, three inches long. And three quarter of an inch high. Cut it out. Now I'm going to take my scoring board. And I'm going to score half an inch from one end. I'm going to bend it in like this make a crisp fold so and then put your pen under the strip like this i'm going to use the uh, thickest part and measure what size you would need for your pen check yeah i'm gonna go under the holder like this and it's best to lay that 
flat on the uh, surface and not just in the air not not hold it like this because you won't you, you will get a, a false reading this way so like this and then really measure where you need to fold again where the bottom would be and i think it would be here so i'm going to fold that part as well and i'm gonna check again so i'm gonna fold these put it on the flat surface and check if it fits or not yes there and I'm going to cut it off the strip half an inch further there and now I'm going to glue those two tabs on top of each other with a sturdy glue um, so I'm going to use the fabric tack again just little bit will do you don't need a lot I'm just spreading it out here with the nozzle I'm gonna put it on top and then to hold it in place that's what you need the paper clip for just to hold this in place until it's dry so you don't have to hold it there you go and just let it dry for a while so and when this pen holder is surely dry you can clean up the edges with uh, scissors if you like. like i see i didn't really uh, glued it straight on top of each other no problem just trim off the excess that's totally okay so and then if you like ink the edges that is purely optional but i'm gonna do that And then I'm going to Mod Podge the pieces that you will see, so the round piece. And don't Mod Podge the back because uh, then the glue, it will be harder to glue it into our uh, journal holder. So I'm just going to apply, these are all quick, quick thingies. I'm going to apply some Mod Podge on the visible pieces here and the edges as well there and then it will be more sturdy when it's dry and more finished okay let this dry for a minute or a few minutes and with when this is dry or at least touch dry take your um, pen holder and we're going to glue it in here also with a strong glue Don't overdo it with the glue, not too little as well, but make sure it's spread out, you know. There's some glue everywhere. And I would like it to, be, to come yeah, here. And then I'm going to use a smaller pencil just to... Make a bond for a while. Yeah. Yeah. And that'll dry on its own. Okay. And now it is time to start making the actual journal that will come in this journal holder. I'm going to measure and cut out a piece of 10 inch and 3 quarter by 7 out of this second piece of the fabric paper thingy yeah to make squares when I don't have a starting point I always tend to draft until I get it right but it would be a lot easier to actually use a protractor or something like that okay and now I am going to cut it out as straight as possible obviously so take your time so I cut it out and I wish I used a less bold pencil because this time I definitely need to um, erase that um, that pencil because otherwise you're 
still going to see that unless you ink over it of course now it's a bit harder to get eraser residue from fabric from the fabric side but a little trick is i use the brush that i normally use clean of course clean and dry that i use for uh for the mod podge actually so that's a really good idea to get rid of that and you will see little pieces from the fabric will start to uh come out but that's that's normal because i i'm literally rubbing the edges with my eraser right now uh, but that's okay we're gonna trim those later Yes, I had to erase quite heavily. That's why I have a few of these threads hanging out. But that's really because I have really been uh, rubbing, rubbing that quite harshly. I just uh, cut them off and we will mop much over this. So uh, then the edges will really be sealed. So don't be alarmed. Normally, if you used enough mop Podge to glue the paper on the fabric, this will hardly happen until you really... It's, it's not falling apart, that's what I want to assure you. I've taken some wax paper underneath and now it is time to Mod Podge this and also the edges uh, so that it's completely sealed. And I'm, then I'm going to dry it ASAP with my hair dryer again. So just like we did with the spine pieces. And try to make straight brush strokes or make sure that the last layer you're putting in has straight brush strokes because I know I've been going all the way. Actually, it would be easier to first, why didn't I think of that, to first do the edges, sorry about this if this is out of focus. We are crafting and you're filming at the same time. You have to think of a thousand things apart from the crafting itself. Okay, okay we're doing this. And then the last edge. Okay, and then let's see if I can make sure I don't have any. <laughs> fingerprints on this as well okay there we go and then I'm gonna let this air dry a bit further. The Mod Podge has dried. I forgot one thing that you can do before doing the Mod Podge and that is to ink the edges as well. I'm not going to do that now anymore because, because the Mod Podge is going to be a little bit of a mess, I guess. So I'm just gonna leave it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to score one line four inches from one side. Like this. Oh, actually, it's better to do it on the inside. It's quite thick. So, yeah, so don't do it on the outside like I did first. Do it on the inside. There. And make a fold. There. And we're not going to fold this piece. This piece will fold automatically on its own it's more beautiful that way i think so i'm gonna put this aside for a bit and as i've shown you before here are all the journal pages that are going to go in here i'm gonna repeat it again i printed them 100 percent size on one side all 24 of them and then i printed them again in a slightly other order on the back but at 102 percent so this side will be a little bit larger and if i will cut out this side there is no chance that you will have a white edge because your printer shifted or whatever and the next thing to do is i'm going to cut out the front side yeah very important cut out the front side not the back otherwise you will have very wide edges okay so here i have my 
24 sheets and now I'm going to make two piles of 12 pages each. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And obviously, um, put them in the right order that you like best. Okay, and then fold them in half. This. And then you can see if you want to change them out a little bit or not. So, yeah. And then this one as well. And now this fold is going to be the spine of the journal. I'm gonna put some holes in the spine, obviously. Put these aside for a bit. I'm gonna go outside in. And obviously you can choose where you put your holes. Um, I'm going to put them an inch from each side. And obviously in the center. Now I say obviously you choose. If you want them off center, why not? And obviously I want holes in um, in the backs of these signatures in the same place that is so but these signatures are a little bit shorter than the um, cover I'm going to place it in the center right into the fold if you don't trust yourself use clips to keep these in place I live on the wild side I'm going to do it without clips Let's see if it works. I'm just gonna go through the same holes. Great! And the other one. Put into place, nice in the center. Don't move, flip around and go through the holes again. There! Now I'm simply going to sew these into this cover. We're going to have one signature. I said two before, I mean two piles because it's easier to actually uh, punch the holes. For me it is. You can punch them in one go if you like. You can definitely have two signatures. Then I would put the holes um, one row, um, an eighth of an inch to the left and an eighth of an inch to the right for the second row. But I'm just going to do one. If you like, you can definitely cut these straight as well, but I am not going to do that for this little booklet here. And I have a thread here. This is more than twice the length of this book. Uh, it's actually three times, that's too much, but at least twice because I like to have some room left to actually make the knot, but I think I have too much. Okay, very easy. From the inside out through the center hole. Yes, these are a lot of pages to go through, I know. I'm normally going through, um, I think, eight sheets max. You really have to be careful. So make sure to leave a tail here and then go back out. And then take your cover and go through the middle hole. Make sure the four inch flap is on that side. Like this. And up. Make sure you don't lose your tail. And then go to the other end. Through the hole. And then through the other holes of the signature as well. There. And then go all the way to the other side, to the hole back out. Through the cover as well. There, sure you don't lose this fellow here. 
could take a nice purple thread if you like obviously i have a quite a neutral one here and back in and make sure you come up on the other side of the center thread here see this thread is in the center sure everything's tight there are no loops here okay and then just make a double knot i even going to make a triple one just because it's such a fine thread here there there we go and here i'm gonna use you for a while gonna make you a bit flat here we have a pocket journal like this with a soft cover but it is still very sturdy and is washable now as you see it's not closed yet so i'm going to add an eyelet here in the center and add some ribbon to it so i am going to find the center of this flap and about five eight of an inch from the side that is here so i'm gonna make my hole there this time i'm going to make a smaller hole so i'm gonna choose the one eight okay and then i'm going to turn this to c3 and I have these lovely purple eyelets. I only need one. There we go. There. And I, I'm not going to fold this side. I needed to fold this side because I wanted to find the center for... Um, for the spine for for actually putting these holes and that's okay but i'm not really going to fold this piece i'm just going to naturally let it fold itself on its own and i'm going to find a piece of seam binding to close this i have some left over here this is probably too long but yeah i can always chop it off later now Eight of an inch is quite a small hole, but I think it works for this. You can make it bigger, obviously. And there are a lot of beautiful eyelets out there in the shapes of a flower or something. Or a heart or a star. Okay, and then we can just close it like this. I think it's still a bit too long, but we'll see. Okay, so, and there we have our journal. And this journal, let me show you, loosen this, it fits perfectly in here. So, there. And now it's in there. And obviously, this is not filled enough yet, so let's crack on with the rest. These envelopes will be attached here and here. You can choose, obviously, this is just what I choose. You can put on there whatever you like. And I'm going to attach my, um, let's see, my notepad holder here. Now, if you only want to have one envelope and, and uh, the notepad here, you can also use this last tab to use for something else. That's why it is completely uh, covered in design. Um, so that if it's, it's exposed, it's actually pretty. That is why. Okay, uh, for the notepad. First, we're going to make a notepad holder and that's why i have this little piece of cardboard i already cut it in the beginning of this tutorial just because it's easier to do those things at the same time and then there is an outside cover i chose this one there are a few designs an inside cover i chose this one and there is for the actual notepad a back and a top you will see um, and the first thing is like always cut these out there, I have all my parts and I'm going to leave this for a bit later because I'm first going to make the holder and I'm going to cover this piece of cardboard with this uh, cover just the same way as I did with the covers of the journal holder. So I'm going to add some double-sided tape all around the cardboard.
there. So you have that. Glue stick in the center is it's really it's just the same as the other covers. There. And then place this in the center. And normally we should have a little bit left over on all the corners. Okay, happy with that. And then pre-fold these because it's quite heavy paper. It will make it easier afterwards. Really pull it. Okay, spread open again. And then more tape on the tabs. Gonna do the long sides first. And the shorter sides. And now I'm already, before attaching the inside cover, I'm already going to attach this to the top tab here, right here. And then on the other side, I am going to apply this here. So it will be applied on here and you won't see where. Well, you will see where, but it will be a bit invisible. Okay. So I'm going to do that right now. I already added tape to these, so I'm going to remove these. Let's turn this around so I can really check. So I put my tape a little bit from the edge and that's good. So it has a bit of room to move, you know. Okay. Now I'm actually going to do this upside down yeah that's that's more convenient Make sure it's centered and straight okay right there gonna yeah i'm gonna put this out for a bit so i can hold it flat so i can actually rub this okay and now I am going to put double-sided tape all around these edges, glue in the center and glue it here on top. Yeah, as you can see, I put it too wide, so over the edge here, but no worries about that. So you just take off the backing and then just Fold it in. There, crisis averted. Glue stick. And now. Nicely in the center. So this piece will hold the notepad, hence this is called the notepad holder. So obviously before um, gluing this in, you could definitely have inked the edges first. And now for the notepad itself, I already cut out the pieces and they are equally wide, but not as long. And I'm going to... Um, see, I have the scales up. No, I'm gonna no I'm gonna keep the scales up this time. So I'm gonna put the long side on its back and I'm going to put the short side on the bottom and I'm going to glue it like this. So the top part will be 
uh, open and I'm, I'm going to do that just with double-sided tape and glue like I always do. So I'm gonna put some tape on the short side. I just have this thing about edges sticking. <laughs> That's why I always use double-sided tape on the edges. Move. Okay. See the scales are the same direction. Okay, and then perfectly line up these. Okay, make sure everything is lined up. Now, obviously, the sides are going to be white because the inside of the paper is white. Uh, so I'm definitely going to ink the edges. If you didn't line them up properly, this is the ultimate way to disguise that. I glued this, but I want to score part of this. So I'm going to let this dry for a bit before uh, continuing with this because I'd rather score paper when it's sturdy and dry and uh, not when it's a bit wet from the glue. Now I am going to score here so it shouldn't be a problem but still um, yeah that's just who I am. Okay so I glued these two on top of each other and it's dry enough and now I'm going to score two lines. One's going to be half an inch from the edge and one's going to be, I'm gonna turn it around, I think it's going to be better, right where I glued the edge on where I glued the other piece. Now it's best to turn this around indeed um, because it's going to be a bit fiddly. Okay, and now fold these over. There. And in here we're going to put our notebook papers. And for that cut 15 sheets. The measurements will come up on the screen. So I have my papers right here and you can definitely use scrap paper for this uh, to recycle paper that you already have if you can still write on the back. Um, this is just uh, 80 grams of paper, the normal stuff. And as you can see the width is about an eighth of an inch so it fits in here rather cozily which I like. And to attach these, I initially was just going to use a staple, but I'm going to use brads. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it right here, use clips uh, if you like. And I'm going to punch a hole about, I'm going to use a ruler here. Yeah, I am going to punch a hole in the center, it's about here half an inch from each side through everything so there we go and on the other side as well and I'm making this twisty motion a bit higher I'm making this twisty motion so I won't um ow <laughs> that wasn't <laughs> wasn't very smart of me. I'm gonna make this twisty motion just not to damage my paper too much. So yes, I'm through now the other side as well. Yeah, perfect. And I'm simply going to take two small brads push them through and open the legs on the back side like this and on the other side as well there if you like you can glue a piece of paper on top of these um, as some sort of a sticker or one of the embellishments just to cover these up. And now this notepad fits in right here 
and I'm really simply going to attach this with a clip like this there we go and on these tabs we're going to attach envelopes and here are the pieces that you need for the envelope there is a body I think there are three designs for this um, there are flaps and there are also three designs for these uh, there are two on this because we need two um, envelopes and obviously you need to print this one twice and there are also some extra pockets I think also three designs I'm not sure and there are also two on one page and the first thing to do is cut these out oh yes by the way for the flaps the back you will see so I printed a full-size paper on the back otherwise it will be stark white so I am going to demonstrate one envelope for you and then the other one is obviously exactly the same so I cut out these pieces and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the um, extra pocket a bit on the side because we don't need it yet. But the first thing I'm going to do is round the corners of this tab. This is optional, but I'm going to do it. Um, make sure if you round the corners, you can do it with scissors too, obviously. Uh, if you round the corners, uh, the corners away from this folding line. And the next thing I'm going to do is fold these two lines. So I fold this one as well. And then put double sided tape on the tab or some glue against the fold. So again, you don't need to fill the whole tab, just put some tape or glue against the fold. There. And then we're going to attach the long part, the highest part from this body on top. So this piece. And if you're not sure, you can see it like this, like the back side is the longest one. I'm just going to place it on top here. There. And if you close it, you see no white. Now, for the closure, I'm going to punch these two circles. You see that? There are two small circles here. I'm going to punch them all the way through. And put this aside for a bit. Now, for the closure, cut two pieces of cardboard. Now, these are leftovers from uh, cutting the pieces for my covers. The sizes will appear on your screen. The first thing I'm going to do is give these some color, some paper underneath. Now I'm going to do that with ink. You can definitely paint these as well, but I'm just going to ink them. They look a bit more rustic that way. Sides as well. And the backs. I'm going to do the backs as well. It's not really necessary because you won't see them. If you use paint, it'll take a bit uh, of time to dry. But if you use ink like I do, they will be drier a lot sooner. And then I'm going to give them a coat of Mod Podge. You only need a small bit. Sides as well. And then let the fronts and the sides dry for a bit. And when they are dry, just put a coat on the back as well. And when they have a coat of Mod Podge on the front and the back and they are dry, um, yeah, these are ready. And now I am going to punch a hole on each side. So I'm going to punch a hole in the center of this um, thingy and also a little bit from the sides so about here. True. Here as well. There we go. 
And now I'm going to use small brads to attach them to this envelope. Through the holes and open the legs. Like this. Yeah, looks a bit funny, doesn't it? Well, the idea is we will close the envelope like this. So make sure this time you don't leave a gap or as, as, as little as possible between uh, the bread and this toggle. So, okay, to protect the rest of the envelope, I'm going to put some pieces of washi tape on the back. You might think, hey, that doesn't suit dragons at all. No, but I think it's a bit funny. You won't see this. So why not have a little bit of fun and make it extra quirky like this and you will never ever 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 see this. Good. Now I'm going to ink the sides of the envelope. Again this is completely optional because it already has some sort of a darker inky uh, edge like a fake ink edge. I'm not going to add much more just on the corners here a bit because I Cut them off. So what you also can do is ink the folds and on top as well, if you like, that is. You can totally personalize it this way okay and now i'm going to take thinner double-sided tape uh, it's not really necessary these but then there's more envelope space and i'm going to put tape on this edge and this edge Remove the backings and then close the envelope. There you go. And now we have a nice little envelope that we can close like this. And we're going to attach this on top of these uh, tabs. I'm gonna remove the backing. Make sure it's in the center and I'm going to glue it where the tape begins. When I applied this tape, I told you to keep like two millimeter or so away from the fold. Well, about there, you can attach the envelope like this. Now you might say, hey, what about this? Well, that's where the pockets are for. We're going to put it on top here and then you won't see a thing. Only the part that has been printed you will see. But before I'm going to apply it, I'm going to find the center and make a notch. This is optional again. So I have a one inch circle punch. I'm going to use half like this. And then I am going to put some of this thin tape here, here and here.
now we have an envelope here with an extra pocket and you don't see the tab at all. And I'm going to do exactly the same with another one here. So I added the second envelope in here as well. And now I'm going to add extra pockets here and here in the cover. And there are cover pockets for that. Um, I chose these and I'm going to cut this out. So there are also two designs for these, by the way. Um, this is the top. I'm going to add some notches as well, like I did here. So I'm going to find the center again. I'm going to cut them at the same time. Yeah. Ink the edges a bit more. Oh, by the way, I forgot to do that here with these pockets, so you can do that with these ones too. And now I'm going to add some double sided tape here, here, here. I'm going to use a thin one again. There and for the front, I'm going to put it right here and just line it up with the corners of the inner cover. There we go. And do the same thing on the other side in the back cover. Yeah. There, and it's starting to look really good. There's quite a bit going on here, but uh, I knew it was going to be rather bulky, so there's room enough to actually fit all this and it'll close like this. Now, the only thing I want to make is another little notebook that will fit in here. And now I'm going to make a little tiny mini notebook that will fit in here. So I printed um, this on sturdy paper again. Um, there are two designs by the way. So we have this one and on the back, I printed one of the full papers. Now take care, if you print something on the back, it's best to take something that doesn't have a clear direction. Like, okay, this has a pattern, but it's the same. The squares are a bit the same, like this and like this. Um, pick something neutral because otherwise this piece <laughs> is directed the other way. I did it so it would all fit on one piece of paper, but obviously I had to change the direction. So, and the first thing is to cut these two pieces out. These we're going to punch out later, just like we did with the uh, journal holders. So I cut all the straight pieces with the trimmer and the rest I'm going to cut by hand. So next I'm going to quickly ink the edges. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to score these three lines, these two and this one. And I'm going to fold these. And now I'm going to attach some double-sided tape to this tab on the front and attach it here so it will be one piece. like this. Now I don't know if you noticed but there are two small circles here and we're gonna punch them. Here's where the closures are going to be. 
this. I'm going to do exactly the same as I did here. So out of these circles, I'm going to punch some smaller circles. I made them large again, so you can choose the size that you want and uh, attach them in the holes. So I'm gonna cut all these four and two extra white pieces to uh, glue in between. So one, two, three, four, and two pieces for in between. There we go gonna put a piece of scrap paper underneath because otherwise it's glue all over so I'll make sure that one of the colored pieces is on every side really see below but still it's a bit lifted and I like it to be not white so that you have the illusion of something great there and then I'm going to ink the edges so they don't look white anymore and then I'm going to punch a hole in the center now punching a hole will go easier when it's dried completely but I'm gonna take my chance And then I have two small brads again here and my thingy. So brad through the circle and then slide through the thingy. Turn around and open the legs. And slide out and nice gap for court. Oh. Same on the other side. There. And again. On the back, I am going to put some of my secret washi tape. <laughs> awesome. And now I'm going to put some thin washi tape just on the bottom of these outside flaps, actually. And I can close them like this and I will have two neat um, yeah, uh, pockets. And this will be hidden. Now you can see that the fold is not exactly in the center. That is done by purpose to give the notebook a bit of a more interest. So it's gonna close like this and we have this extra little piece here. And uh, later on we're going to add some cord here to close. I said this was going to be a notebook. There's no paper. Indeed this is the cover. And for that you can use regular paper, obviously, or scrap paper or uh, recycled paper. I made some mini versions of the journal pages so they would fit this booklet as well, if you would like that. And I'm going to use those. I didn't print them all because there are a lot of them. And I don't want this uh, little book to be like this big. So I only printed these three. So these three pages, so I have six sheets, just regular 80 grams paper. And as I said before, I printed the same, um, not the same, I printed other pages on the back, but 2% larger. These are at 102, so you have less chance to have white edges. And what I'm going to do now is cut these all out on the front. I was wrong, these are the fronts, the other ones were backs. Cut them out on the smallest side, just... Look through them to a window and you will see that the other 
side is bigger. So I have my beautiful six pages here and I'm going to just make an order here like this and then stacked I'm going to fold this stack in half and now it is time to punch some holes. I'm gonna start with the cover and I want some holes and I want one in the center um, that will be here at 238 and then three quarters of an inch from each side. That's what I choose. Now you can definitely staple this. You can definitely use a double running stitch again like we did to sew the tabs together. Choose what you like. I'm just going to use a simple three hole pamphlet stitch. And obviously I need some holes in my signature as well. Um, yeah, I'm gonna quickly reverse the way I fold these. And that has a reason because I'm gonna put it in here. Make sure it's in the center because these pages are a little bit shorter than the cover. Make sure it doesn't move. Turn around, use clips if you don't like it. Um, and then I'm gonna just punch through it. And then the holes are at the right size. Now, why did I reverse the way I folded this? Well, if I fold them right now, in the center I won't have these weird... Um, it, the holes are beautiful. That's what I want to say. The holes are just more beautiful. And then I just need some threads. Like this is more than enough. You want like more than twice the height. And this is almost three times the height. So more than enough. So. Let's start in the center. Out. Out. Make sure um, the direction of the paper and the cover is the same one unless you want a mysterious upside down inside of book you never know so i'm out and i'm gonna back gonna go back in on the top one or the bottom one it really doesn't matter cover and pages all the way to the other hole back out Make sure this doesn't leave you okay and then back in center one and try to make sure try to make sure you come up on the other side of the center thread and this way if you make a knot it will tighten the center thread a little bit more I'm gonna go three this thread is strong I feel it but so thin I'm gonna make three you choose Et voila, we have a little booklet. I like to fold the pages so they will move very well in here. We have an ultra little extra journal now. And the pages are neatly disguised here so they don't fall out. But we have like this uh, little bit of extra interest here. Like this. And I'm going to use this cotton thread as my closure. And I'm actually going to use that for here as well, because this is really too thin. But kudos for me for trying. Always try first. Okay, this I'm going to see. Maybe it's too thick, but then I can just unravel, unwrap some of these. Oh, I think this is more than enough. I like to use the thread first before I cut, up, cut it up to the ideal length for me. Everyone has an other ideal length, so yeah. That's how I like to do it. Because this is a bit thick, but let's see how it goes before I cut it off. So, does it work? That's the main part. Does it work? It actually does. I'm gonna leave it like this. Okay. And then I'm going to cut off the excess. So, and this is the way we close it. So, there. And for me, this is enough. And now this piece.
piece fits perfectly in here. You might say, oh, I can fit another one in here as well. Well, you can, but see how bulky this piece already is. So that's why I'd rather have one in here and keep the more flat pieces in here. And now I'm going to change out this one. Oh, this is going to be so much better than that tiny thing. The, the tiny thread that I use is strong and so handy for sewing pieces like this, like, like the tab and sewing journals, etc. But to actually use as a closure like this, no. That's too thin. Okay, now let's see. Oh, way better. Way better. Hello. Little piece off. So, and my previous pen, um, <laughs> I made it a tiny bit too small. See, measure right before you start doing stuff. And I just going to use a smaller pen. So this is it. And now you can embellish it a little bit further if you like. And to finish off this journal, I'm going to attach these corners. By the way, if you like to add a metal label holder or something, do that before applying the inner covers. Do that with everything that you want to add on the um, covers. So. I'm gonna use some pliers to attach these. You can use a hammer as well. So there, and now I wasn't sure what I was going to do with this little guy here in the center. Put this aside for a bit because the, uh, the ribbons are quite long, but I'm going to attach some charms here. And on the first one, I'm going to attach this one. Now I found this from when I was making paper beads a million years ago, this is how I started on Etsy. I made paper beads and I sold them, quite a bit of them. And I just found this and I'm just going to attach it to the ribbon. I'm gonna make this one a bit shorter, this. And how am I going to attach it to the ribbon? Good question. So I have these thingies here. This is, this, this is my stash from my jewelry making uh, time. and. Actually, do you see what this is? So you have these. So I might use these or I could use these, I'm not sure. These are super fine to clip around a piece of ribbon or would I use these ones? No, I'm gonna try the small ones. Let's see what that does. If it doesn't work, I could just cut it off. So you can use some extra glue if you like, but normally, some good pinching with some pliers will already do. I just, you have this U shape here. I don't know if you see it. You just put the cord. You can, this is actually meant for cord, not ribbon. But this is, this ribbon is fine enough. Just put it in there and then just close one end. Oh my God, this is fiddly. I forgot how fiddly making jewelry was. Okay, one side closed, then I'm just going to close the other side. Oops. There. Okay, that's not going anywhere. A bit of the ribbon is sticking out. That's okay. It's meant to be rustic. So I have a loop here on the side. And this thingy already had a jump ring on the end, so just gonna open this jump ring. It's a really sturdy one, so I will need 
two pliers for this. Yep, open it through the hole. Yep. And close the jump ring again. So with these thingies, like actually if you have one of these and a jump ring, and if the thing that you want to attach also has a hole, <laughs> you can actually add anything that you like. And on the other, I am going to, wait, whatever, what else did I have? I have this pearl drop. And I'm going to use this thingy, finding my mojo back. I'm going to use a spacer here. So this thingy is a piece of wire that's really bendable and a ball on the ends to stop. And then I'm going to use this spacer. It's shaped like a flower, just to add some extra interest. And then I'm going to add the bead. Then. I am going to make a loop. Let's see if I can still do it. Actually, I'm going to uh, wait with the loop. Uh, then I don't need an extra jump ring. So I'm going to first add another one of these to the other end. Fiddly, fiddly, fiddly. Close, yes. And now I can already put this thing through before finishing the loop. Now I'm not going to explain completely how I'm doing this, but if you would be interested in learning this stuff from me, let me know in the comments because this is something we usually don't do, like with the jewelry stuff, because it's it's on, it's on YouTube like everywhere, but maybe I do it differently, I don't know. Um, okay, just going to close this. It's just a matter of being handy. And there! Now we have two charmy thingies at the end here. You know what? I'm gonna make a knot here because I think otherwise my charmy thingies will be like two puppies on two different um, walking. What's 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 the walking rope in English? I, I don't know. Um, but you get it. Two puppies that will entangle and yeah. Let's just make a knot. through yeah i think just that's a lot safer there they can use these to close the journal and it has a bit more interest this way there we go so let me clear this up quickly i think we're ready obviously if you like these charms you can add one you can add many here as well. For example, in the spine, you can add uh, some of these holes with uh, eyelets. You can add a lot of eyelets here and just, yeah, add stuff like this everywhere. Okay, and now I'm going to close this. And I am so happy right now. Okay. Oh, yeah. One last thing is I always wait until the end just to prevent that this would come loose i'm gonna go here i'm gonna bend these parts a bit so they come a bit straighter and less um less round and that is because then you will have more room here you see now it's more straight and indeed i almost forgot it but i like to do this completely at the end so this glue would have a lot of time to dry. That's why. And I'm gonna do the same here. Maybe, yeah, this is easier. Just fold it like this. I'm gonna fold it here as well. And that's why this piece was a bit larger than this piece, um, because then we would have room enough to close, to actually close this bundle. 
uh, obviously you see like this plain cotton here if you have like cotton with the most beautiful prints that would fit this theme go for it then it wouldn't be just plain cotton okay guess what ready and this baby is ready to be filled with memories and ideas and a lot of stuff i hope you enjoyed this lengthy two-part tutorial and if you would like to craft this whole project yourself you're welcome to discover this dragon destiny mega project pack in our shop the link is below or if you would like to see first what printables are exactly in this pack i made a separate video for that the link is below as well and now i wish you a truly beautiful day